Okay, so I know we already looked at the query key and the query function at the beginning of the series, but it has got some extra features that we definitely need to take a look at. So basically the caching that we saw in the previous video, React Query manages all the caching activities based on the query key. At the most basic level, the query keys almost always will be an array with a simple string. But there are complex variations as well, like for instance, an array with the nested object. Our example right now has the simple query key, but let's say we want a component or a page that displays data for an individual post. So I click on one of the posts and it takes me to a separate page. This page should then fetch data for the post, which means we need to have a new query. So let's first create this new page. Inside the main.jsx file, I'll add a new route. This will be a dynamic route with the ID of the post. Inside the list of posts, I'll convert the main div into a link. I'll have to turn this into a block component because link is inherently an anchor tag and anchor tags are inline by default. Let me first convert this into a link and I'll add block to this. I'll also pass in the to attribute and I'll point it to the post ID. Finally, inside the post component, we'll have a query that will be fetching the data for the post. So nothing fancy. Below this query block, everything is pretty much the same. A block to handle the pending state, a block to handle the error state and the actual result displaying the post. Now the query key here has to be dynamic in nature. We have a dynamic component here, which is this ID that we get from the route params. I can actually directly use it, but the query then is just meaningless and there's a chance of a clash between some other query with the same key. So instead, we'll be using the complex way of defining a query which to be honest is not really that complex. I'm just going to add the ID after the posts. So here it's going to be the same post first. And after that, I'll just add the ID. The query function will pretty much be the same. This time it will have an ID at the end. I'll save this and I'll go back to the browser. Let me first actually start the server. So now if I go back to the browser, you'll find multiple queries specific to each post whenever I click on any of these items. So if I click on this and open up the dev tools, you see that the post three query has been triggered. I can go back and select some other post as well. And yeah, the respective query gets triggered. Each of these queries are cast independently and anytime this variable changes the ID variable, Queries will be refetched automatically depending on your stale time settings. We don't have a stale time setting here. So let's add a 10 second stale time. Now, if I click on the first post and come back to the list and then again, click on the first post, it will use the cast result from the query instead of fetching it again. So let me go back to the list and take a close look at the network tab here. I'll actually clear this. And let me select the first object. I go back and I again click on the first post. You'll see that the network request does not happen for the first post because we have a stale time of 10 seconds and react query prefers cache data over stale data for those 10 seconds. So if I come back to this post, now that the 10 seconds have passed, you'll see that it again makes a request. Now, even when the query is inactive, it still won't do a refetch as long as the stale time is not met. That's because the inactive queries do not get garbage collected right away. They stay in the memory for a while, so they are still used by React query as and when required. I can pass random things to this query key as well and then access it inside my query function. So let me just add like an object to this query key and I'll simply console log the key inside here. This query key is not exposed by default inside this function. We'll have to access it from the params. So I'll just get it from here. And now it's accessible. If I go back inside the browser, you will see the query key in the console. And we also get access to this hello world object. So yeah, you can essentially pass whatever you want inside the query key and use it inside your query function. Now, one bonus tip that I'd like to share is to not manually create and add these query keys, at least when you have a huge application. 
it's not only error prone but but also makes it difficult for you to change the query keys in the future like for example say we have multi level filters for our post and these posts could be of type audio video text photo and so on now if we want to filter based on say audio we can create a query key called posts audio manually but a better way to handle this would be to create a factory for your query keys a factory will have all your query keys in one place and you can add update delete or do anything with your keys much more efficiently it's just a simple object with entries and functions that will produce query keys which you can then use across your application for the example that i just mentioned the factory would look something like this you can now use these keys inside your query key directly now all your query key related changes can happen under one roof which makes it much more easier to maintain so hopefully this gave you some additional info on the query keys and functions and how we can use dynamic data passed down to a query if you like this video make sure to subscribe to the channel and yeah i'll see you in the next one